Well, hello everybody. It's Manoli here with Manoli's Musings. How are ya? I'm doing mighty fine, Manoli. How about yourself? Well, thanks for asking. I'm okay. It's, it's a Monday night. Monday night. Just won my fantasy football game. How about that? Making a comeback. Like I said, the comeback king is on his way back up the rankings. He's one of he's he was in last and now he's slowly rising up the ladder, coming to knock people out. Hopefully knock a few people out of the playoffs and maybe get in there myself. Hey, you know who else was knocking people out the playoffs left and right? Your University of South Carolina Gamecocks. How about that? A big congratulations to my alma mater's football team. A big congratulations to Shane Beamer and Spencer Rattler for beautiful performances. As well as the special teams. My goodness, magnificent. And, I mean, all the Gamecocks who played in these games. I mean... Uh, two weeks ago, we beat number five Tennessee, upset them, knocked them right out the playoffs, which I was happy about. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, because it was a great win. But you know, I know a lot of Tennessee fans, and they were, you know, dogging the Carolina this and that. And uh, well, look what happened. And then, as if that wasn't good enough, we did went up to where Clemson plays. Now, Clemson, for those who don't know. I mean, if you would have to not be from South Carolina, otherwise you'd just be living under a rock. But South Carolina and Clemson are rivals, bigger rivals. I mean, this has been going on for like 100 years or something. Uh, It is very intense rivalry, and Clemson's beat South Carolina seven games in a row. They'll tell you eight years, but it's not true. It, technically, it is true, but there was a COVID year they didn't play. So it's seven games, okay? Don't give them anything, the Clemson people, because they just take it and they run with it. But that streak is snapped because uh, my Gamecocks traveled up to Death Valley, they called it, and they whooped their ass on their home turf. And they snapped their winning streak. They snapped their home winning streak. And they snapped their uh, up-at-halftime winning streak. It was a beautiful game to watch. I was traveling up on the road. I was watching it on the phone. I don't care what it was. I was so happy to see Carolina finally win against Clemson. I hadn't seen it since I was 13 years old or something. It's ridiculous. But, yeah, Manoli's a happy camper this week. I'm happy with my Gamecocks. They really came around. They they beat two top 10 teams in a row. Uh, knocked them both out of playoff contention. And uh, yeah, it was pretty sweet, I have to say. Oh, the Clemson people, they're coping hard, man. They are coping hard. They are upset. They're not happy. They're like, <laughs> they always come up with excuses. And they bring up like the overall record, like that matters. Like, sorry to tell you that your overall record against us didn't help you on Saturday. But it is what it is. You know, they got to cope somehow, I guess. But, oh, man, it's fun to mess with them. You know, these people can't take a joke. It's freaking ridiculous. They won seven Seven times in a row against us. And then they, they won two national championships within that time. What are you complaining about? It's just one game. I mean, I understand that, you know, it's your hate rival, but eh, tough. Tough. It's our state. And this is, this is, this is not going to be a one-off. I have a feeling Shane Beamer is turning South Carolina around. It's been a long time coming, but I have trust in Beamer. I have trust in what he's doing with the program. So there you go. Congratulations to the Gamecocks again. Oh, man, I was happy. I was hooting, hollering. I posted so much stuff on Facebook talking trash. I don't care. I can be insufferable. I've waited my whole life for this almost. Not my whole life, but ever since I can remember, you know. I, yeah, so I've been a little insufferable lately, but uh, I don't really give a, give a crap. Call myself there. This is a family show. I shouldn't be cursing. All right, Manoli, whatever you say. By the way, I got a new microphone. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, but hopefully I'll adjust along the way. Uh, for one, it's a lot bigger than my original microphone. The original one is tiny. And this one has so many knobs and buttons on it. I mean, you need a damn pilot's license to operate the thing. And here's the thing. I put it on my Christmas list. And my mother said, did you have ask for a microphone for your Christmas? And I said, uh, yeah. She said, well, I have one here that, that I got because I wanted to do some stuff that I never did. I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah. And then I'm like, that's the same one I asked for. She's like, 
No. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's the same microphone. And so here it is. I don't know why she just didn't wrap it to give it to me, but uh, I'm not complaining. Um, so, yeah, what's been going on? There was a lot. I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do rapid fire. Rapid fire, because a lot happened and I need to catch up. So going back, let's travel back in time. Picture, if you will, early November in Charleston, South Carolina. Beautiful time of the year. The fall weather, the sweaters coming out, the barber jackets, all that stuff. Bonfires, you start that, you get that smell in the air, the smell, the smelly smell that smells smelly. Um, Spongebob reference. Uh, yeah. And you know what was in town? The Coastal Carolina Fair. Well, hallelujah. Um, I always like the fair. You know why? Because you go there and you can just be a freaking glutton and you, you know, it's totally acceptable. You can eat whatever the hell you want and it's just fine. Uh, I don't, uh, I eat my fair share, but at the fair I eat like a, like a damn horse, I swear. Um, here's what happened, right? So, my family, they left early. They had to go do some errands, and then they said, meet us later. Okay? And my mom said, here, I have I have two tickets for you. The ones to get in for admission, and ones for the rides. You have to buy it separately. So you get the admission, and you get a wristband to go on all the rides. Okay. So I put it in my pocket, right? Anyway, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm like, oh, I should really change. And uh, change my pants. And, uh, you know, I kind of forgot that those tickets were in my shorts. So, basically, I didn't realize until I was almost there. And by that point, I was like, oh. Because, let me tell you, the fare traffic can get crazy. Luckily, we went the first weekend. So, it really wasn't bad at all, leaving or going. But I didn't know that. And I'm like, oh, do I turn around or do I just do I just bite the bullet and go? I'm like, yeah, whatever. I have my credit card. I have some cash. Whatever. It's fine. Well, of course, you know, I uh, I didn't want them to know because I knew they would be upset. Especially my father, he he would he would he would not have been happy. Um, so I I get to the gate and I'm like, oh, it's okay. I just won't say anything and I'll I won't I'll just you know I'll just pay to get in. It's it is what it is. You know, I it was my mistake. I messed up. I have to pay for it. Right. Get to the gate. They don't take my credit card. It's the one kind they don't take. And I'm just like, oh, why? Why? Luckily, I had some cash on me. Uh, it was enough to get in. The admission was $15, but there was not enough to uh, buy the pass, which was $35 because it was a weekend, which is a little ridiculous if you ask me. But so I get in, right? I find my mother. I said, hey, how you doing? And she's like, I'm fine. What's going on? I'm like, everything all right? Yeah, everything's good. I'm like, uh, you don't happen to have uh, a few extra bucks, uh, you know, on you. I had like, I was like 10 short, right? I mean, I felt like I was back in middle school asking my mother uh, for money to go buy a soda or something. It's ridiculous. And she's like, no, I have. I have like four dollars. I'm like, are you sure that's all you have? And she's like, yeah, why? I'm like, well, I kind of forgot the ticket in my my pants back home. And she's like, oh no. I said, yeah. Is there any way you could ask? That's uh, Baba. That's what I call him, my dad. That's that's the the Greek term. But is there any way you could ask Baba for uh, a few bucks? She's like, I don't want to ask him. I'm like, I don't want to ask him either because I know he's gonna. He's going to chew me out. But thankfully, he had an extra pass. And I just got it from him without, you know, any really a detection of what was going on. So until he listens to this, uh, I should be uh, in the clear. So, yeah, all's well that ends well, right? Anyway, I'm walking around the fair. I mean, we're eating. I'm eating. And I'm eating. I think I, I got a sausage dog, which is my favorite. That's what I go to the fair for. I don't go for anything else. I, it's a long way from Charleston. Not really that long, but when you add in the traffic, it could be a real pain in the ass. I go there for the sausage dog. That's all I want. The onions, the peppers, the big old sausage, 
with the bun. It's it, that's that's all I want. That's really all I want. The Italian sausage dog. The rides, you know, I've kind of gotten over those. The lines are too long. It's just too long. There's too many people. Too many freaking people at this place. And I go and I walk around and I look at you know, I look at all the food and the gluttony going on and uh it's interesting. I took Leo on some stuff, my little brother Leo. Um he went down the slides and stuff and we well, I went on a few rides with him and that was fun. Um but yeah, what else did I eat? I, I had a sausage dog, I had souvlaki, I had a slice of pizza, <laughs> I took a sausage dog home. I ate my fair share. But you listen, the fair only comes once a year. So I say, go for it. Why not? Right? What else, what else did I see at the fair? You know those things, those rides, I swear, that they look like they're about... To, I know that they're... Well, they're supposedly safe. Uh, I mean, I tell you, sometimes those people, they just look like they're going to fly out. Those ones that go up and spin you around and upside down. It's like, why would you do that? Especially after you've been eaten. Oh my only not everybody goes with the stuff their face. Well, I do, okay? I assume other people eat. And I don't eat all the sweet stuff. Y'all are the ones that eat the elephant ears and the funnel cakes and the fried Oreos and the the fair. You know what they had there? They had a quarter pound of fried cheese. Quarter pound on a stick. You know how much cheese that is? I could really mess someone up if they were uh, intolerant, but oh boy. And they also had a they had a pizza and all they had well and it was pickles and I'm like that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, now, needless to say, that is not something I ate. and I did not eat the quarter pound of cheese. But they had all this stuff: the fried Oreos, the fried fried, the fried butter, the fried this, the fried that. I probably fried a pigeon that was sitting on the bench there. Um, but yeah, you know, I walked around. I took Leo through some of the stuff he liked doing the fun houses. And I can't really blame him. I used to love doing that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I like to see some of the animals too. They always have animals there and whatnot. And you walk around and that was pretty much it. I went home. That was a fair. I got my sausage dog. I took one home and I was happy. Um, it's always interesting though. There's always a colorful cast of characters there. But um. You know, I thought I thought about my ticket. I think I still have it. I tried giving it to someone, but they weren't going. Uh, I think if I took it next year, I think it might actually work. Uh, you know, those those workers, they don't. I don't think they're too stringent. What's the word? Stringent, stringent, string, string, string something. I don't think they're too strict. How about that? String it. That's the word. String it. I don't think they're too stringent. That doesn't sound right. I don't know what the hell the word is. I don't really care at this point. They're not too strict on the tickets. I don't think. I mean, you look, you go up there, they have the cigarette hanging out their mouth. They don't care. You could give them a, a voucher for Denny's. They wouldn't, you know, it doesn't matter. Um. Anyway, uh, what else is going on? Oh, so from Fair Food to Bach. Um, yes, I sang, I got to sing. I was asked uh, randomly by a guy, uh, this choir director, he has a small ensemble in town. He said, hey, you busy uh, this day, this day, this day? I'm like, no, I'm not busy. He's like, oh, do you want to sing the Bach uh, Christmas Oratory? And I said, sure, why not? I've always wanted to. He's like, oh, I'll pay you too. And I'm like, well, that sounds even better. So, yeah, awesome. Um, and I did, and it was great. Uh, long work, uh, two and a half hours. It's not for the faint of heart. And by the end of that week, you know, my voice was shot. I was singing so much. And not that I was singing unhealthily. It's just a lot of singing. And it was only, you know, you had to... It wasn't like one of those big choirs you could just kind of get away with, you know, cheating out with a small group like that. You got to, you know, you got to know your stuff and you got to do your part. But difficult work as well. I, I was impressed because the soloists also had to sing all the choruses. And I was like, good on y'all for keeping your voice in shape with all that singing. I'm like... I give it to you. Yeah, we did a couple performances, but I mean, what a beautiful work. Difficult. It's very difficult. Far harder than Messiah, at least in my opinion, from a chorus standpoint, at least. But um, yeah, really nice. But man, some of that is long. That one aria in, in part, in the second cantata, that Schlafen mein Leibster. <laughs> Schlafen mein Liebster. Um, it's very long. Very, very long. I don't know why Bach 
uh, thought that the, the capo was necessary, but there you go. Oh, here's the story. So my my mother, my father's out of town, right? So my mother came to the first night to support me. But she didn't have anybody to watch Leo. And, you know, he's six years old. He's not going to make it through two and a half hours with a Bach. And I had thought that it was going to be the first half, the one night, and the second half, the next night. But I was wrong. It was the whole thing, both nights, which is fine. I mean, the one of the Mary, as far as I'm concerned. But I told them that it was only going to be half. So they're expecting to get out in an hour. And, well, the thing is almost three. But it didn't really matter because... Uh, my mother, she's sitting there, and Leo's not happy. I mean, I, I can't blame him. The thing is not in English. Uh, he, he's six years old. He doesn't have an appreciation for Bach yet. I mean, hopefully one day he will. I would hope he would, but he's miserable. So my mother told him, uh, she said, all right, after this song, we'll leave. Which happened to be Schlafen My Leapster, which is the longest <laughs> the longest aria or anything in the whole work and it, I think it stretched to well over 10 minutes and I'm like when I heard that after that I started laughing because that's just that's just their luck it couldn't be one of those 30 second corrals that had to be the longest thing in the whole piece but I thoroughly enjoyed singing it um, it was new to me I didn't think I would ever get to sing it especially not uncut with a fabulous orchestra and great great singing all around and I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. It was a lot of rehearsal, a lot of driving around, you know, different parts of town, but it was fun. And I got paid for it, so no complaints out of me, I have to say. Um, and I had another performance the week after. By that point, my voice was real shot. Um, so I get out of this performance, right? And it's like 940, 945. This is the next week. I go to one place. We're closed. This is a Friday night. We close at 10. I'm like, are you are you serious? You close at 10. I can understand shut the kitchen down, but you got to you gotta shut the bar down too? So I go to the one place. I was really, I, I just wanted food. I was hungry at that point. I hadn't eaten beforehand. You know, you go to work and then you go to the show and then you'll get to eat. Um, so I go to the one, <laughs> I go to the one thing. We're closed. I go to the next place. And I say, uh, excuse me, uh, are y'all still serving food? And I, he, the guy's like, the bartender's like, yeah, man, we're, we're still serving food. The kitchen's still open. I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. I sit down, and this other lady walks up, and she's like, yeah, what do, what do you have? And I'm like, I'll take a, can I see a food menu? And she's like, no. And I'm like, well, why not? And she's like, the kitchen's closed. I'm like, this guy just told me it's open. And she's like, no, he's wrong and at that point. And she's like, do you want something to drink? I'm like, no. <laughs> I didn't say it like that. I was just like, you know what? That's fine. And I would, But I must have had the most sour puss look on my face. I don't like the walking around. The shoes were killing me. I don't like being, you know, you know, you just want to get some food. You got to go to one place to the next place to the next place. And finally, I, I ended up at the this other place. That, oh, the dog is at my door. He's, he, I think he wants to come in. He keeps, he's knocking at the door. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to open that door. He's going to walk in here for 10 seconds, and he's going to go away. Let's see what happens, okay? This is an experiment. Watch this. He was gone. Um, Astro is his name. Uh, oh, let's see. Is that him? No. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Anyway, so the third time's a charm, right? So I get to the place, and uh, by this point, I had had it, okay? I went to the one place, they're closed. Next place, they gave me that false glimmer of hope. They said, oh, we're open. I said, yeah, because I love their food. And then the lady came, and she just crushed my dreams, which, you know, it's just sad. And then I, so I went to the next place, and finally, I get to sit down, ask the guy, the bartender, I said, are you serving food? I don't know what I would have done if he said no, but he's like, yeah, we still we still serve it with him. I'm like, oh, thank God. That guy looks at me strangely. Anyway, so I'm trying to figure out what I want, right? I order a drink, and then I'm, I'm sitting there talking, chatting, just trying, you know, showing my surroundings. Some of the fellow performers were around me, and then this guy, he goes up, 
so what do you have? And I'm like, oh, well, I'll take this drink or whatever. He's like, okay, what do you, and then I'm like, I'm going to order some food. And he's like, and this is like, I kid you not, like two minutes after I sat down. He's like, oh, well, what are you going to eat? I'm like, well, I don't know. Can I look at the menu? He's like, no, I have 500 people to take care of. I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, there's, there's nobody here. It might be 40 people max at this place, 500 people. What the hell are you talking about? Even then, I don't really feel like getting lectured by you. You act like I, I know nothing about food business. I, hello, I worked in a restaurant my whole life growing up. In the summers, a family restaurant. I understand the food industry, okay? But that's fine. I said, you know what? I'll just take the burger if that's okay with you, sir. I wasn't happy at that point. He just kind of growls at me. I'm like, you know what? I, I you know, I'd spend a third. Uh, who knows how much for the drink? I mean, these these hotels in Charleston, they charge you out the ass. Who who knows how much I'm paying for this drink? Who knows how much I'm paying for this burger? And I got to get a lecture from this guy. It's like, eh. Please. But I had a nice time um, <laughs> because I met uh, saw some people I knew and that was always fun. But yeah, that guy was a real piece of work. It's like, you know what? I don't need the lectures. If you could just politely say, you know, we like to get it in all at once. You know, there's other ways to say that without being like, oh, I got so many people to take care of. You don't know what, you know, you better hurry and blah, blah, blah. It's like, just can it, okay? I don't want to hear it from you. I've been wandering around here like like a nomad going from one place to the next and then I come here and I gotta talk to you. But anyway, um hey the World's Cup the the World's Cup. World Cup's going on, right? The US is playing tomorrow, we're playing Iran. Um go USA, that's all I have to say. Why isn't Greece in there? What the hell's going on? Usually I have two teams to root for, now I have one, which is fine. I mean I'll root, I mean, I'm happy to root for the United States. I, I think I was pleased that we tied England, but um, I got to tell you, I cannot watch soccer. Um, like, unless I'm in, like, a bar and I'm downing, you know, five, six, seven beers, I, I can't watch it on the television. I'm sure it would be fun in person. And I've enjoyed the live soccer games I've been to. That That's fine. But, like, on the TV, it's just you're really waiting for something to happen. It almost gets there, and then you're out. It almost gets there, and then you're out. And then they might not ever score. It sometimes it could be a nothing, nothing tie, which is what happens uh, with the United States and England. But you know, better than losing, I suppose. But I mean, can you imagine if I had sat there and watched that whole thing? I would have been bored out of my mind. Uh, but anyway, so what does that get me to? It gets me to Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful that my Gamecocks with the orange team's asses. That's what I'm thankful for this year. And I'm thankful that I got to sing in the box. And I'm thankful that I got my sausage dog. More than one, actually. Um, yeah, I'm pretty thankful, I have to say. I'm th- yeah, You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for my lovely listeners. That's what I'm thankful for. What are you thankful for? Huh? I'm listening. You can talk to me. There's nobody around you. You could just... I, I will hear it, you know, through the cosmos. And I will know. That you're speaking to me when you tell me what you're thankful for. Don't you hate that, though, when you get there and you just want to eat? They're like, what are you thankful for? I'm like, I'm thankful for this food. I'd like to eat it if you don't mind shutting your face. Luckily, my family doesn't do those kind of shenanigans. But we always go to my grandparents in a small town, Prosperity, South Carolina. That's where my mother grew up. Uh, and then my grandparents are still over there. So we always go to their house. And uh, it's always a fun time visiting them. They're a lot of fun. Uh Anyway, but it's about like a two and a half hour drive and we get there, finally, and I'm ready. I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm going to get to, you know, take a little nap beforehand. This will be fantastic. I'll be ready to eat. Everybody will get here soon. You know, I'll just hang out and I'll help where I'm needed, you know, offer the help. It's really an empty gesture because I don't really want to help, but I I would if I had to, you know, carrying chairs or tables or what. That's about all I'm good for. Um. And usually I can bring the wine. That's that's my contribution. I can't cook for a damn. But, you know, I don't have to at this point in my life. So when I do have, learn, have to learn how to actually make something worthwhile, then I'll be in trouble. But for now, I'm just coasting along on my youth. And I'm going to enjoy it. Um, anyway, we get there to the house and my grandfather says, uh, 
I have to go pick up this this woman. Uh, she's coming to eat with us because, uh, but anyway, she wants to, she wanted to eat with us, and I'm like, and I'm like, oh, okay, that sounds good. He's like, I want you to ride with me, and I'm like, all right, I guess so. I mean, I just got out of the car, but you know, my grandfather asked me. I can't tell him no, of course. And uh, anyway, so we're talking, we're talking, and he gets all in his stories and whatnot, which are fantastic. I love his stories, but. I'm like, you know where this place is? And he's like, yeah, it's this little house on the right. It has shrubbery in front of it, and it's on a corner lot. I'm like, you don't have the address? And he's like, no, she didn't give it to me. I'm like, all right, well, whatever you say. So we're driving, we're driving. I think the, the thing is 15 minutes away. Anyway, we, we keep going, we keep going, and then we get to downtown Prosperity. And he's like, oh, no, something's wrong. I'm like, what's the matter? He's like, well, I got to talk it, and I... I must have gone past it because I know it's not by town. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, well, I guess we just have to turn around. And, of course, that takes time. You have to turn around. And I'm like, uh, hey, Papa, you, uh, why don't you ask her for the address? And he's like, I know where it is. It's on the corner lot on the left. And I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you sure she didn't give you the address? And he's like, no, she didn't give me the address. I'm like. All right, whatever you say. I'll keep my eye out for this corner lot with shrubs in front of it. Uh, very specific, right? <laughs> and we're talking, we're talking. And then we do it again. We go way past where we're supposed to be. And at this point, it's been like 45 minutes driving around. I'm like, uh, all right, why, why don't you call her? He calls her. And then he's like, and then she's talking and and he's like, hey, hey, it's a corner lot with the trust in front of it, right? And she's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, and now are you in front of town? You're behind town? And I'm like, Papa, why don't you ask him for the address? And I guess he doesn't hear me. And so finally, she's on speaker. I'm, I just go, what is your address? Because <laughs> at that point, I was like, we got to get out of here. And she's like, oh, it's XYZ on whatever lane. And I'm like, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. I'm like, Papa, why don't you ask him for the address? And he's like, I know where it was. I know where it was. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to ask for it, for directions, but they don't have to. They always they, they want to be a navigator, and I respect that. And But at that point, I was ready to get home. I mean, I, I, there were beers to be had and people to talk to and, you know, turkey to nibble on before we're supposed to. And I had to get home. I've been in the car for three hours at this point, three and a half hours, and so... Finally, I, we put the address in, and we find this lady, and uh, we get in the car, and we're driving, we're driving, and they're talking, talking. At this point, I'm not even paying attention. I'm, like, on my phone, whatever, and uh, they start talking, like, uh, now, what road is this, and where are we? And I'm, like, what? And they're, like, no, I thought we were supposed to turn at the fire station. And I'm, like, oh, my gosh, we got lost again for the third time, and I'm, like, like, y'all, what, what happened? And he's like, well, I guess I, we got to talking and I must have missed the, the turn of the fire station. I thought that's where I was supposed to go. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, why didn't you say something? He's like, I thought I knew where I was. <laughs> and I'm like, that's it. I'm putting in the address. And I know your address, so you can't do these games where you try to avoid taking the address. I know it. And then I put it in and we got home. But the trip that should have taken 15 minutes took an hour and 15 minutes. But... Hey, it's a good story, you know. It's very, uh, it's kind of fun. In, I mean, it was fun in that part. I was laughing because it's just totally my granddad to just be like, I know where it is and just keep driving around and, rather than ask for the address. I mean, we w probably would still be driving around if I hadn't asked that woman where the hell she lived. Um, but, you know, he. I guess he's earned the right to try to find it on his own. But at that point, I was like, I got to get home. Anyway, so we'd sit down and, you know, I, I must have had 47 beers that day. Not, not that much, but, you know, it was Thanksgiving. I was spending the night there, so what the hell did I care? I just, you know, it was Miller Light, so it's not like I got, I didn't get really, I had a little buzz and that was about it. But anyway, we finished eating, you know, turkey, mac and cheese, sweet potato casserole, all that stuff, the corn. The little uh, chicken and dumplings, or dumplings and gravy, or whatever. I don't know, gravy on everything. Gravy, 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 stuffing. Beer. Um, 
appetizers, fermento cheese, all this stuff, beautiful stuff, you know, country food, country cooking. And then we have dessert. I pass on the dessert because I had already stuffed myself full of turkey. Um, anyway, and then the cards started. We, we love playing cards. We're a card-playing family, okay? Um, at least in my grandparents. We play, uh, I talked about Progressive Romy, which is my least favorite. I hate that game because it takes two and a half hours, you know, with a 15-minute intermission. It, and it's just very frustrating because you can do good, good, good. You have one bad round and that's it for you. And my grandmother wins uh, nine times out of ten. It's ridiculous. She always wins. I don't know what the strategy is. I haven't figured it out yet, even though I've wasted 36 hours of my life playing that damn game. But I think I've won two times, three times. I probably played more than that. I must have played this game 30 times in my life, and I think I've won twice. So what is that winning record percentage? I don't even know. It's not even a tenth. I'm in the point zeros here with my winning percentage. Point being is that I don't like progressive from me. So I, I said, uh, why don't we play the marble game instead? Now, the marble game is very cutthroat. Um, basically, what you get is you get a board, and you get four marbles. And the goal of the game is to get them around the board and then back into your home base. Right? And whoever gets all four in wins. Sounds simple, right? But then you get, there's all these little wild cards now. So a jack will let you switch places with someone. If you go over someone with a seven, you knock them out of the game. You can move backwards with a four, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it makes it more interesting. And I tell you what, it gets very cutthroat because sometimes, you know, it's good. It's fun to get your man in base, but then it's really fun to knock people out of the game and just to see their reactions. Um... I play mercilessly. I play the win. The, you know, some of them, they, they want to be nice and this and that. I don't like all of that. I say, I'm playing these marble games. And I'm here to win. There's no money involved, but I want to win. I'm very competitive like that. Very, very competitive. And uh, <laughs> um, I did win the first round. Uh, I played my cutthroat self. I, I made it in by one round. The, somebody else was the one at the table. Uh, I like the marble game. I, and I figured out the strategy to the Marvel game. It's that you never, ever pass your base if you don't have to. And that what I mean by that is that if you have a marble that's kind of close to being able to go in and you have one that's like oh, way over here, you don't, you always move the one around and you wait. You just sit on the marble that's close with, without, you know, without ma moving it past your base and making it go all the way back around. That way... Eventually, you're going to get lucky and you're going to be able to get your man in the base. But you do run the risk of somebody knocking you out, which isn't fun. But I got lucky. Nobody really knocked me out. It, usually, it's harder to knock people out because you have to land on them directly, which I do on purpose. But um, some people don't play that way, which is fine. I mean, but, you know, there can only be one winner. And first time, it was me. Uh, second time, Leo played. And... Uh, he actually won. He won his very first Marvel game. I was very proud. Of course, he had some coaching from uh, yours truly, but he won. Uh, it was very impressive. Good, so good job for Leo. He's he is one for one in the Marvel game. Um, so yeah, after the after all the riding around, we got to play some cards and then take a little break. And then me and my grandparents we played Pinochle, and that's really best with three people. So. And I still don't understand that game completely. I mean, that game is complex. You have the melt and the trump and the this and the that and the... I don't know. We played two games, which is... The goal is to get to 100, right? The first game is the worst game I have ever had in Pinochle. I didn't have one good hand. I got, like... I started off the game, like, negative... After the first two rounds, like, negative 40-something in the hole. Uh, my granddad... My papa, a little sneak, he's like, you should go for it. Because you don't have to go for it if you don't think you can make it. I'm like, I'm like, well, why not? And he's like, he's like, well, you know, you don't know that you're not going to be able to make it. I had to pull like 20-something cards. I mean, it was really stupid that I even did it. But I hadn't played in a while, and so I listened to him. And the rest of the game, he's laughing at me, saying, ha, 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 show what you got, right? And I'm like, you manipulated me into doing that. He kind of showed a little Manoli in him. I was I was surprised. Usually I don't get 
Usually I'm the one tr pulling the tricks, but I got to give it to my granddad. He got me good. Of course, he didn't win either. My gr we played two games and my grandmother won both. So go figure. Um, after this uh, Thanksgiving, we spent the night we come home. Then, what the hell did I do Friday? I don't even remember. I did something. But Saturday, we went up to Harris, Cherokee in the mountains, the Cherokee, North Carolina mountains, which is about a five-hour drive. Um, and my brother went on the Polar Express that they have up there. They have like a little faux Polar Express thing. Um, and uh, anyway, he loved it. Um, I couldn't go because they couldn't get seats, so I just hung out at the casino, which the worst places to be, um, I suppose. But yeah, so he and my dad went, and I, I, I hung back and. I did a little gambling, I played a little slots, played a little craps, and uh, I won some money, so I was happy about that. Um, you know, I guess I got lucky, which is rare for me. Usually I lose I lose in spectacular fashion. I mean, my luck is just not always the best, especially in gambling. But, hey, this time I came out a winner, so... Oh, let me tell you, I, I ate some food up there. My goodness. There's this Italian place, and I, I had all kinds of food. I had chicken chicken milanese which is was good and i had had this shrimp egg, eggplant that was really good and then before I even, I even got there i went and had an app at this other restaurant a fish dip with pita chips and it was delicious but by that point i had eaten so much i couldn't eat no more and let me tell you there's this bartender there he's a secret he's my secret weapon and uh he gives you a pour like you wouldn't believe i mean there's a there's this guy gives you like a quintuple pour, and it's fantastic. He doesn't charge you extra. He just gives you, he just dumps half the bottle in there, and then you all you need to do is visit this guy once, and you're set basically. Um, he's the best. He's a secret weapon. I'm not going to reveal who he is because I don't want him to get you know. They're always listening to people, but, uh, you know I appreciate him. That's all. I always go by and see him. I say, hey, how you doing? Uh, you know, Mr. So-and-so, he's like, oh, it's good to see you again. And then he gives me the pour, and that's it. I'm all away. I only, I only need one drink for the whole night. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, yeah, I had a good Thanksgiving weekend. I game cut beat Clemson's ass. I got to play some cards. I got to win a little money, and I had, I had a good time. Got to go to Cherokee, North Carolina. It's a beautiful spot this time of year with all the, the leaves changing. And the mountains and whatnot. I like looking at mountains, okay? Mountains impress me. I said last time buildings impress me. Mountains impress me even more. They're just majestic and beautiful. I wouldn't want to live in them. Don't get me wrong. But something about a mountain is just gorgeous. And we uh, we stopped on our way to pick out the Christmas tree. We like to get these live trees from North Carolina. They cut them down right there. And beautiful trees. All kinds of trees. You know, left and right. Trees, trees, trees. So, uh, and now it's uh, sit down and... In our living room, and it looks it looks mighty fine. I have to say, it looks mighty fine. So, uh, yeah, doing pretty good lately. Um, that's all I have for you. I talked for forty minutes, and I really think that that's enough. I mean, how much can you listen to me talk? Really, it's freaking ridiculous. But, eh, I guess that's it. All right. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Adios.